Hi, and welcome to our workshop today about volunteer recruitment and retention. We're really glad to have you here with us. My name is Melinda McGoldrick, and I am the program manager for Energize Our Neighborhoods. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Nikki. Hi, I'm Nikki Drake. I'm the Energize Our Neighborhoods coordinator. We are the Energize Dynamic Duo. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you here today. We're gonna talk about volunteer recruitment and retention, which is something that's so important uh, for neighborhood associations, for community groups, really for anybody who is looking to get some help with projects. So we are going to dive right in here. We'll cover our learning goals quickly, and then we're going to go through some demonstrations of things. So the first demonstration will be about recruiting, talking about how we can recruit people to do things for us, um, going through some basics of that. Then we're going to cover what we call the pitch. So that's talking to people about your organization um, or making a specific request of them if you are looking for people to do something for you. We'll do some demonstrations of that, and then we'll talk a little bit about retention. So once you've gotten all these great people to come and help you out with things, how are you going to keep them involved in your organization long term? Then we'll wrap up with some questions for you to think about, and we'll be on our way. So our goals for this training really are to give you the tools that you need to engage people in your organization. So you are going to learn how you can put together an effective recruitment strategy how you can identify people to come and join your organization and assign them specific things that you need done. We're also going to talk about the importance of investing in the people that you have, whether they're new volunteers or volunteers that have been with your organization for a long time. So you'll leave with simple strategies that are going to help you recruit those people, help make it really clear what types of things you're looking for help with, and then keep those people on board long term. We're going to dive right into recruiting. So this is often a challenging thing to think about, um, but it's something that almost all organizations need to be doing. And it's not something that you're necessarily ever done doing either. So it's something you can continue to work on and improve and refine your strategy. So first we're gonna watch a couple demonstrations about some recruiting tips. Um, the people in these videos have been instructed to reach out to a friend and to try to recruit them to do one of these three things. So either come to see their favorite movie, uh, come over and help clean out their garage, or to walk 10 miles for a good cause. So let's see how they do with their recruiting. Hey, I got this great kidney race coming up. Uh, it's a 10K, and I know that you and your wife are totally into running. Would you come with me this Saturday at three o'clock to do the race? Is it Ann Morrison Park? Sounds pretty good. I'm in. Right on. See you there. <laughs> All right. So that was one example of recruiting somebody to come and do a race for a good cause with them. Let's watch another recruitment pitch. Hey, Derek Lee, how are you? Good. How you doing, Ryan? Pretty good. You have any uh, big plans for the weekend? You know, not this weekend. I'm pretty open. Are you open on Saturday? Yeah, man. Uh, help with some things out of my garage. Do you think you'd be available on uh, about 10 a.m. on Saturday? Yeah, that sounds good. Some food. Yeah, Does that yeah. Sound good? I think that gives me time to stop by and grab coffee. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you bet. We'll see, see you there. <laughs> so that's two different examples of people recruiting people to come and help them with something or to do something for a good cause. We're going to talk a little bit about what went well in both of those pitches. So first of all, both of them did a good job about including details of what they were looking for. Specifically, when Derek Lee was trying to recruit Ryan to come and do a race with him, he explained when it was happening, where it was happening, um, kind of the details behind it, and he did a good job of trying to relate it to the other person. So when he said, hey, I know you and your wife are really into running, that was a great introduction into one of the reasons why uh, Ryan and his wife would potentially be interested in coming and doing this race with Derek Lee on the weekend. Um, in the other pitch, cleaning out the garage, that might be a little tougher of a sell for a lot of people. Um, but Ryan did a good job of explaining that he was going to take care of Derek Lee if he came over to volunteer and help him out. He was going to provide some breakfast for him and really try to make it worth his while of coming over. 
Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about what could have gone better. So I think Nikki has a few things to share here. Yeah, I think, you know, they did a good job. Um, maybe in my mind, this kind of goes into the next one too about being prepared for, you know, when someone might say no. Um, it would have been helpful to have a couple of options, present a couple of options to kind of reduce the chances that the person will say no, right? So maybe I don't know if you like to run. So to say, hey, you know, we've got a race and I would you do you like to run or you would also be able to walk, you know, running is not a requirement. <laughs> Everyone does not love that. Um, or if you're not just sure those are options, maybe you have another suggestion like sponsoring it, right, rather than actually physically participating. So that would probably be my my input for that. Awesome. The other thing to remember is, you know, in this case, it looked like they knew each other and they probably had met before. But if you're trying to recruit somebody that you don't know, it's really important to introduce yourself. At the very least, they need to know your name. It's also helpful if you're recruiting somebody that you've never met before, if they know what organization you're with as well. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of the basics behind recruitment. And the first one here is having a goal. So if you just generally are recruiting new people, um, like that. that's great, but it will help if you have a very specific goal in mind. Sorry, Nikki. Yes, um, I'm gonna jump in here actually for the basics. Um, so thank you for kicking it off, Melinda. So as she said, yes, number one here, developing your goals. So what is it you're trying to recruit for and why? And this is a really important step, right? Because this really um, informs the rest of your strategy, the rest of your process. So really important piece. Um, you know, are you wanting volunteers for an event? Are you looking for ways to, you know, increase social media presence? Are you wanting more perspectives on the board, you know, and wanting to target different different voices, different groups, um, you know, sponsoring an event, right? A lot of options, but identifying that is, is that key. I want to also give an example that will kind of carry through these steps as well. So let's say for me, my goal, you know, I, a couple of residents in me, we, are interested in having a neighborhood cleanup, right? We've noticed some garbage, some trash, and we want to do cleanup. There's, we've got some seniors, we've got some weeds that we want to help with, right? So we want to coordinate this. And we tried this a couple years ago, and we and it wasn't super successful. So this year, we've decided that we would like to engage um, families and staff and kids that go to our local school, which is five blocks away. So we think that's a great way to just increase our participation, right, and create a kind of a, a larger sense of community. So that that's that's my goal. So let's move on to number two. Developing a list of prospective members and places to recruit. So this is our who, our where, our when, right? We want to make sure that this list covers our recruitment goals, but we also want to make sure that it's manageable. So we can start out, you know, with a couple ideas, a short ish list, and then we can, you know, always expand that as needed. But we don't want to feel totally overwhelmed initially. <laughs> it's not a good feeling. <laughs> so going back to my example of a cleanup. Um, so we want staff, parents, students to get involved. So where might we start with that? Well, how about if we attend a PTO meeting, parent teacher organization meeting, and we talk about, you know, our event, our idea. Does the school have an upcoming, you know, parent teacher conference night or an upcoming event or a resource fair? You know, we can have a table and, and engage and chat with people and tell them about it. Um, for the student piece, which is a little bit different, right? We can, you know, do they have a student leadership group or a club to meet with? A lot of clubs have that kind of a required service project piece, right? So that's like perfect. So we can create that list and start from there and then just with one school, manageable, you know, and then see how that goes. So moving on to number three, develop and practice your elevator pitch. I love an elevator pitch. <laughs> I get very excited about this. Um, so this is your chance to introduce yourself and make your ask, okay? Getting a succinct, quick, clear, 
you know, spiel down is super important. So this can be your chance to spark some initial interest with someone um, and then lead to that longer conversation, you know, start to build that rapport and then, you know, have opportunity for follow up. So, you know, it's really like your chance to get your foot in the door and then keep that door open, right? <laughs> Not get it slammed. So in order to be clear and, and succinct, um, and to not appear nervous, which is also key, it is so important to practice. So think about what you want to say, you know, write it down, practice out loud, um, perfect it. And I think this can really feel silly for folks, especially if this is not something you've done before. Um, you know, it's like really like I'm going to sit and practice out loud, but <laughs> um, it is so, so helpful. Um, you know, to seem comfortable, to seem natural, especially who is typically comfortable, you know, just like kind of starting a, a conversation with a stranger. Um, and then to ha it also helps to think through, you know, having some different responses, right? Depending on how that other person um, responds to you. So this, um, <laughs> this always, of course, Melinda always hears this, but um, <laughs> this always makes me think of campaign work, right? Or any type of, you know, canvassing door to door work. So, you know, in in my past experience, I just think about I, you know, I think about that particular experience. So the beginning of every day before kind of going out to talk to people, we would partner up and we would do a role play and we would practice our spiel. And this is wasn't just, you know, the first week on the job, right? This is every single day for months and it was, you know, different partner and it was so, so helpful. Like, I mean, it seems silly every day, but like, you know, you're with someone new, they respond differently. They're nice. They're not nice. They're positive. They're negative. They're receptive. They're not right. And it just, it's so helpful to just become comfortable and be able to kind of navigate um, those different reactions. So super key. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> oh, one more thing on that. Um, it, reminds me as well about a conference that Melinda and I went to a couple years ago. This was a few years back at this point. Um, and we did this kind of like speed dating for networking. And um, at first it felt very silly, but and I was not you know eager for this, <laughs> but it also ended up being a really interesting uh, exercise for me. Anyway, I had been with Energize a short amount of time. I hadn't really given a spiel, you know, like a short, succinct spiel about like what Energize is or what we do. And so um, I had heard Melinda do it, but I hadn't done it. So, you know, from the time, like the first couple conversations I had with people, which was, you know, maybe not like the smoothest, you know, trying to explain what we do to the end was like a huge difference, right? It was like, I felt like I was becoming a pro with it. You know, I was like trying different things, changing it up. And then I felt like, oh my gosh, I can talk to anyone. I've got this down. So again, practice is just really helpful. So obviously, you know, I love a pitch, so I'll move on. <laughs> so the next one, um, understanding the power of seven. So this power of seven rule states that people need to see and hear your message at least seven times before they will act on it. So the moral of the story, the takeaway, be persistent. Um, this is so true. Like so many studies have been done about this, um, you know, especially again related to campaign work and fundraising and all of that. But um, it's very true. So I just think about, for example, you know, when when public radio starts doing their annual, you know, fundraising drive, right? Those first couple of times I hear it on the radio, I totally ignore it, totally tune it out. Then, you know, third and fourth one, fifth one, I start to feel like those little pangs of guilt. <laughs> and then as the programming is interrupted more and more and I hear it more and more, I finally, you know, go, oh my gosh, let me just take the one minute to do this, you know, and make my little contribution. So there really is, you know, science behind that for sure. Um, okay. The other piece I want to add to that is, you know, it's not just persistence, but it's definitely, um, you know, being mindful of the type of outreach that we're doing, right? So again, this face-to-face -face opportunity is so important. 
Uh, also, lots of studies have been done about what is more effective, what is more engaging. So, you know, if someone gets an email or something in the mail versus a phone call versus that face to face interaction, they're they're far more likely to be responsive and commit to taking some type of action after that face to face. So really, really powerful tool. And then last number five, always wait for an answer. So if you don't ask your prospective member to do something, they are not going to do it, right? So, you know, again, it seems pretty basic, but it's really kind of easy to, to, to miss that step a little bit. So, you know, um, have your specific request, get your specific response. If they're not sure what you're asking, they're not going to offer, you know, just offer up some action. And then as we kind of saw in that first round of, of role play, you know, have your kind of a secondary or maybe a lower lift request in mind, ready to go if that answer is no. OK, so we're going to move on. <laughs> so much information. OK. So we're going to dive in a little bit more to this elevator pitch. Um, and I'm sure you can imagine we've got another practice coming up as well. <laughs> so we call it an elevator pitch because, again, it's meant to be quick, something that, you know, in theory, right, you're on a short elevator ride. You can get this information out before those doors open and that person is gone. OK, so um, it can be really handy you know, for for various settings. So when you're recruiting members, when you're trying to, you know, get folks to come to an event, when you're trying to get sponsors, when you're just networking, right? It's just a really handy thing to have down um, in your back pocket. So like we already talked about, practice is key, practice, practice. And then you can really think about breaking this down into three parts. So you the who you are, you know, what your organization is, what it is you're looking for and why, and then your specific outcome or request. So who are you? <laughs> Say your name. Very easy to to get excited and kind of skip that part. But then also, you know, say the organization that you're with. And if it's not a group that, you know, most folks are familiar with, make sure you add in just a, a line or a short explanation of what it is that they do, right? Um, super helpful so that the person knows, you know, what you're about, who you're representing. Um, so number two, so what, you know, what you're looking for and why. Um, try to be really specific with this. This is really the bulk of your of your pitch. So, you know, again, are you trying to increase members? Are you trying to get a contact for another group? Are you trying to get sponsorship? You know, what is it? And then why? So you want, you know, this is where you're trying to have some meaningful reason behind what it is you're asking for, right? That's going to engage that person. Um, so that is number two. Um, number three, specific outcome. So what is your ask of this person? <laughs> um, this one can be, you know, it can be kind of a fine line because you want to be clear and you want to have that ask, but you also don't want to be like, you know, super demanding where it's a lot of pressure or if it's too much that the person, it's just too much for that person to commit to, you know, that can lead to a no. So, you know, if you can have an ask, but again, maybe have a second option or, you know, potentially be a little bit open ended that can alleviate some of that pressure. So when I going back to the example that I used about the cleanup, you know, if I say, you know, I'm thinking of my pitch, right? So, hey, our neighborhood's dirty. We want you to come pick up trash. That would be really great. I mean, that's not necessarily the most riveting, you know, <laughs> persuasive thing unless you just live for trash. Maybe that you will find that one person. But, um, you know, really thinking through and preparing, you know, what's going to get folks out to this, right? So, you know, if I if I try to engage my my audience and I say, you know, like, hey, I've been noticing trash, you know, the couch on the corner, um, you know, folks who can't take care of their yard. We we really, um, you know, we want to clean up this area and we would really love to have the school and our families and our kids involved, right? To build this community together, you know, we're all part of it to, to increase our sense of neighborhood pride, you know, whatever it is, just trying to find something that will 
will be a little bit more meaningful for folks. Um, and then, hey, we're going to celebrate with a barbecue and some games. <laughs> Incentives never hurt. That's always <laughs> very helpful for anything you're trying to get done. Um, so that's just, you know, those are the types of things I would be thinking about, you know, as I'm planning my pitch and then being prepared for, you know, my 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 spiel to adults, to parents, to staff of the school, and then, you know, my spiel to kids, which is probably going to be a bit different. So we are going to this is the point in the in a in person conference, right, where we would have our person turn to each other and practice. But we have our lovely volunteers on video again, um, practicing their pitch. Oh, we, we've got the volume off again. There we go. No. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Is there no sound? Nope. So be thinking of your goal and your pitch and and practice in your mind and we'll get our video sound up and going. I'm Derek Lee. Ryan, it's good to meet you. Yeah. Hey, how can you do Since Constance was in the and we're putting together this coming year. You in the Greek food? That's awesome, man. Hey, I'm looking for sponsors right now to help uh, uh, some of the uh, food and really be interested in uh, hearing if you'd be willing to uh, be one of our sponsors. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about it. Definitely. Um, can we come, can we meet up tomorrow uh, at the church, say 10 o'clock? Yeah, sounds good. That'd be great, man. See you there. See you there. Thanks. All right, so that was our first sample, and then we'll move on to the other one. Hi, Derek Lee. Uh, I'm with Conservation Voters for Idaho, and we work on a lot of clean energy, climate change, and transportation uh, policy. Um, do you walk or bike to work? I do. That's awesome. Do you, are you a biker? I'm uh, pretty much a pedestrian. Pedestrian? Okay. So one of the things we're working on is actually trying to use our, our canal pathways to connect more communities. Uh, so we're in a group called the uh, Canals Connect Communities Coalition. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things uh, we want to do is, since all of our communities are largely connected by the canals, uh, we want to utilize some of those pathways along the canals. Uh -huh. um, does that sound like something you would support? Potentially. It sounds like that's great. Um, we have a newsletter that goes out monthly, a monthly email, and then we also have social media you can sign up for. Do you think you'd want to sign up for those? Yeah, why don't I give you my email? Perfect, sounds good. All right, thank you to our lovely volunteers. Um, so I'm going to start and just point out a couple of things I, I think went well, and then Melinda will jump in with some of her thoughts. Um, I think it was great. So that first what video I think was maybe a little bit choppy, but that was for the Greek Food Festival. Um, I think Derek Lee did a great job of kind of setting that hook, right, of do you like Greek food? Because really, who does not? Let's be honest. Um, so that was kind of a great lead in to, to engage his audience. Um, for the second one, Ryan, um, I think it was great that, you know, he said the name of his organization, but again, a lot of folks probably aren't familiar or may not be familiar with what they do. So then he added in, um, you know, uh, what they do, um, but then also found that commonality and asking, you know, do you walk, do you bike, right? So he kind of set that groundwork and then he could lead into the rest of what he was looking for. Absolutely. And there's always things that we can be working on in these pitches. So, you know, it's not something that most people do all the time. So feel free to revise. And if you feel like you tried to pitch something to somebody and it didn't go super well, you know, just 
don't be upset about that. Just kind of try to take notes in your mind of what you want to do better the next time around. So I know even after we asked them to film these little uh, role playing situations, both of them, I think, still felt like they could have done better and they wanted to do it again. But we really wanted to have this opportunity to talk about some of those things that we can always be doing better um, when we try to do these recruitment um, projects. So, you know, one of the things that Ryan talked about was his organization and this uh, coalition that they were all working with together. But, you know, I think there's always more that can be done to better connect what you're asking for and the person that you are trying to recruit. So saying, are you a pedestrian? That's great. Um, and that's definitely kind of that first layer of engagement. But that next step down, if you wanted to dive a little deeper, would really be explaining why having pathways along canals would make life better for a pedestrian. So, you know, we're working to try to look at the these pathways all across the community. Um, because you're a pedestrian, having access to those pathways would improve the number of places that you could safely walk or, you know, increase the number of miles of connectivity and walking areas within our community specifically for you. And that's why you would benefit from being part of this project. So really trying to connect it back to individuals and either, you know, things that they're passionate about or things that they're interested in or things that they would directly benefit from being a part of. It's always important. Um, and I think, of course, you know, we mentioned this before, but if you don't know somebody, make sure you introduce yourself. Um, <laughs> we really can't say that enough times because it's so easy to forget, but it's such an important thing. Um, if you think about it, if somebody just approached you and started trying to convince you to do something, but you had no idea who that person was, um, it would probably greatly decrease your chance of saying yes to whatever they were asking you about. Um, Nikki, anything else you want to throw in here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> name goes a long way um again we come back to this you know what if the person doesn't say yes um and i think that you know it's just really important to keep in mind it doesn't matter you know how charismatic you are how persuasive you are um personable like you're going to get some no's right and that's okay like that is to be expected um again all these all these studies out there, right? Like when you're doing engagement, whether it's knocking on a door or engagement in the street, you know, they say for every 100 attempts you make, whether knocking on the door or trying to talk to someone, um, if 20 people stop and engage with you, that is considered successful, 20 out of 100. So I just say that because, again, I think it's important to just know you're going to get no's. It's OK. Don't be disheartened. And I think that's where it helps to, like, you know, have your goals. Um, have your targeted groups that you're you know trying to reach out to and then practice this pitch so um i think on that note we are going to move into the art of retention and melinda's going to take us through that yes so you've done an awesome job pitching your project or your organization and you've gotten all these people to say yes awesome how are you going to keep those people engaged long term? Because this is really important. Recruiting is really hard. Finding people to say yes is really difficult. So you don't want to have to be continually doing this over and over again if you're losing the people who said yes in the first place. So you want to keep them engaged in your organization and help them grow and help them feel comfortable and happy in what they're doing. That way they want to continue working with your organization long term. So some of this comes back to what we talked about in the last recruitment pitch about talking about why your organization or the project that you're working on is important to the in individuals involved. So why is it valuable to them? This could be a lot of different things, right? Depending on what you're working on or the purpose of your organization, um, but making sure that people understand why it's valuable to them to be involved. Not just that, hey, you're gonna get a t-shirt if you show up, uh, that might be a great one time motivator, but that's probably not going to keep them there long term or coming back time after time. But really, why is this important to them? So maybe it is, you know, working together, we're going to expand pedestrian opportunities uh, along those canal pathways. And that's really important because maybe this person lives somewhere where they don't have any outdoor space. Maybe they live in an apartment. And so for them, the only time that they get to be outside recreating is, you know, if they're out taking a walk or if they specifically go to a park to be outside. So for them, this would be a great benefit just in terms of opportunities that they have available to them. So really important that people understand why you want them to be engaged and why it matters to them in their everyday life. It's also so important to respect people's time. 
So this partially goes back to looking at your recruiting goals. Are you holding a big event where you need 100 volunteers to come and help you with things? Awesome. Sometimes that happens, but far more frequently, we don't need 30 people to show up to set up tables and chairs before a meeting, right? Maybe you need a handful of people to come and help you, but making sure that people feel like their time is being valued is super important. I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we're told, hey, I need you. I need you to come to this thing. It's really important. And then you get there and there's no job for you to do specifically. They're like, oh no, we've got it. We already set up all the tables and chairs. Or, oh no, everybody is already passing out this information. So we're good. And we don't actually need you to be here. That doesn't feel good for a volunteer, right? Because I made time in my schedule and you know I made the effort to come and be here. And now I'm being told that I'm not needed. So make sure that you're thoughtful about the time commitments that you're asking from people about what you need them to be doing and make sure that people really know how they fit into that bigger picture of your organization or the project or the work that you're doing. If you don't need to have a meeting ahead of time, don't have your meeting, right? If it's information that you can uh, share in an email or maybe through a quick video update that you share to people, that's great. It's again, being respectful of people's time because we all have a lot of commitments happening in our lives. And you know, people are gonna spend the time where they see it valuable for themselves. So really you know, making that connection and being respectful is super important. And then be intentional about building community. So you have a bunch of volunteers who all came together. They have at least one thing in common, right? They all want to be there. So they care about your organization or the work you're doing in some way. So help them get to know each other, help them develop those bonds. And, you know, those even if it's just, you know, taking an acquaintance uh, level get together to maybe somebody who would meet up for a coffee sometime and really trying to build those friendships and that connection within your group. So we all know it's far more fun to go to an event with a friend. Uh, I'm much more likely to show up to pull goat heads if I know that, you know, my good friend and neighbor is also going to be out there pulling goat heads. Um, so whatever it is, help to kind of build that sense of community of, among members and help them identify things that they might have in common. Sometimes you as the leader of a group know these things that people might not know that they have in common. So you could say, hey, did you know that you both live on the same street, even though, you know, maybe it's opposite ends of the same street, so they might not have met in passing. But once I know that person is on my street, I'm probably going to make more of an effort to find other commonalities between ourselves. This is especially important if you have new members coming into your group. I'm sure everybody's been there before where it feels kind of overwhelming or intimidating if you're the new person coming in and you don't know anybody in a group. Even if you're super passionate about the work that that group is doing, if you don't find a person to connect with there on one of the first times that you come to meet with that group, you might not want to continue coming. If you're not an outgoing person to begin with and you don't feel not comfortable necessarily just introducing yourself to people, um, having somebody who can kind of make an introduction and help you feel at home, introduce you to other folks in the group, um, really can go a long ways in helping people feel comfortable and helping them feel like they are accepted and that they should come back and continue to participate with your group. It's also important to do regular check-ins with folks. So, you know, just a quick, hey, how are you doing? Um, can help identify if people are feeling connected and if they are feeling, you know, engaged and like their specific uh, traits and, you know, things that they bring to the table are being valued and utilized. So saying, you know, how did you feel about that last event? Did you have any feedback? This can be a great opportunity for people to share like, hey, I would have loved if I could have helped do X, Y, Z thing over here and can help you identify who might have, you know, other assets or other skills that they would like to be bringing um, to the rest of the group and helping to make your projects better overall. Um, you know, alongside of that is remembering those accomplishments and the key dates and things like that and celebrating with your group. There's a ton of work to be done out in our community and I think it's really easy for us to get kind of blinders on and just think, hey, we're going to do this thing and we're all going to work really hard and, you know, we're going to get it done. OK, maybe you did that. Maybe you had a million people come together and you had a really great event. It's so important afterwards to say thank you to those volunteers and to bring them together and say, hey, look what we were able to do by coming together. Um, if we forget that piece of it, there's a lot of people who feel like, well, maybe people didn't actually care. And that might not be the case at all. Everybody has different ways that they like to be recognized and to think about their accomplishments. Um, but making sure that you do take some time together as the group to say, look at what we did. You know, maybe if you're cleaning up trash, it's make sure you take a picture of all of those trash bags before they get hauled off to a dumpster. 
um, or you know, take a before picture of an area. And then once your volunteers come in and they've cleaned up all the weeds, take an after picture and make sure that you share that with your volunteers. It's also a great thing to be able to share on social media um, or in a newsletter or on your website to be able to say, hey, look what we did together. You know, we we came in and we cleaned up all of this trash or we cleaned out all of these bags of goat heads, um, whatever that might be. Just really having that visual and taking the time to say thank you. So that was kind of a quick run through of things. Um, we also have a couple handouts that you will be able to find that go along with this course. Um, and those handouts outline these different tips around retention and then also kind of those basics around recruitment and your elevator pitch as well. So be sure to check those out. So in wrapping up, we just have a couple questions that we really want to encourage you to be thinking about within your organization. So where do you need to focus in the next year? Maybe you have a ton of volunteers, but they're not overly connected. You know, maybe you really want to focus on what you can be doing to make them feel like they're part of this group more. Um, or maybe you only have two volunteers and you really need to be focusing on finding some more people to help with the work. That way, those couple people who are involved don't get burnt out. But really thinking about what makes most sense for you. Do you already have the people to help you reach your goals? Or do you need to be looking for people who have specific skills and assets and things that they could bring to the table to help make your organization even stronger? Be specific when you're thinking about these things. And then, you know, what aspects of recruitment and retention are you going to work on first? So make that plan. You know, you have maybe a recruitment plan that you but think about that retention plan as well and outline some steps. You know, when are we going to hold a volunteer celebration day? Um, when are we going to hold a big event? What are the things that we want to work on together as an organization? Finally, don't be afraid to make mistakes, right? Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody's pitch doesn't go perfectly the first time. Um, sometimes we feel awkward and stumble over words. It happens to all of us. So, you know, sometimes you forget to share your name or the organization that you're working with. We've all been there and we've all done that. Um, the thing is to just remind people, hey, I'm a volunteer. I'm not used to doing this. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please bear with yeah. me and, you know, start again. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, if things go really badly, just say, hey, look, I, I'd love to follow up with you and, you know, share some way for them to get in touch with you. And then, you know, just think about what you can do better the next time. Try not to get too hung up if it doesn't go perfectly one time, but think about always how you can be improving and what you can be doing better. We yeah. have a couple little blooper reels because we had fun with our volunteers when we were filming these things and they made mistakes too. So don't feel like you're the only person out there who stumbles over words from time to time because that is absolutely not the case. <laughs> so finally, we'll just share. Hey, I'm Derek Lee. Who are you? Uh, I'm Ryan McColdry. Hey, Ryan. Hey, you know, it's interesting. I work for the, um, dang it. <laughs> It happens to all of us, so don't feel bad at all. But we're so glad that you were able to join us here today to watch this uh, little workshop. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us at energizeourneighborhoods.org, or you can reach us by emailing energize at cityofboise.org. Thanks. Thanks so much. Neighborhood Interactive. Interactive. <laughs> Yes. <laughs>